Are there any further speakers? There is. I call um, Andrew Little. So, Mr. Speaker, I expected the uh, government. I, I expected that the government might actually have an interest in this matter because it, it is a very serious matter, Mr. Speaker. The contracting out of state functions uh, has been fashionable for some time, but it has always been problematic. It has been the stock and trade of this government in so many areas and in so many respects. And it comes from the point of view, at least from this government, that those with a profit motive can serve the public interest. And that's why this government thinks they can wholesale contract out very important state functions, uh, including now a lot of social support functions, or if they can't contract them out, hand them over to private investors, would you believe, for a, a, a return on their investment. Uh, and this government just applies that principle of contracting out to the private sector indiscriminately. But there are some state functions, Mr Speaker, particularly those involving the deprivation of liberty, the custody of those detained to serve penal terms, that in my view are or fall into a completely different category and should not be the subject of contracting out. And that is the Labor view. And we've stood aside and watched what has happened, in this case, in this part of the prison service, the Mount Eden Correctional Facility, noting that the contractor who is running it is also now responsible for the, uh, the uh, guarding and uh, detention responsibilities at the new Wirree prison. Hundreds of prisoners under their charge. Hundreds of prisoners, their responsibility. Now, we don't, in our society, we don't deprive people of their liberty very easily. And we shouldn't. And when we do so, we do it according to the rule of law. That people know if they are facing something that can result in the community taking their freedom off them, they know what the charge is. They have a right to see the evidence of the wrongful behaviour that justifies the removal of their liberty. They have a right to be heard in court, adjudicated by an independent judge free of the strictures of ministerial or, or other state or crown interference. That's our judicial system. We take it that seriously. When people act in such a way that they offend against the mores of our community, of our society, and they do so in such a bad way that we find it necessary to take their freedom off them. That's why we have a criminal justice system. And that's why we have a system that we invest a great deal of authority in, and we give extraordinary powers to deprive people of their liberty. And that's an important part of our constitution, and it's an important part of our community and our society. The badness of the actions of somebody whose liberty we are depriving must justify their removal from the community, must be proportionate to their actions. So we do all that right up through the police investigation, through management, through the judicial system and the criminal justice system. And yet we now have this slow erosion of those important public service constitutional responsibilities at the corrections end of the process. Well, Mr Speaker, it is vital that public confidence be maintained in the process throughout. From the time that we send in a publicly funded police force to investigate, to the time we put in publicly funded judges and a judicial system to rule upon what has happened and to cast a judgment and to sentence and, and uh, to send people uh, to prison and deprive them of their liberty, we invest a considerable amount into it. And the question then is whether we should continue to maintain that responsibility as a state, as the Crown, while the person is detained, while their freedom is denied them. We suspend prisoners many citizen rights, but they don't stop being a citizen. And I see no reason why, when we do that, we should hand over their custody and their care to private organisations whose basic motive is to make a profit. And in, in pursuing that motive and in making a profit, they have an interest in cutting costs and doing the bare minimum so that the owners of that private business get to benefit. And that's what's happening here. And as I said before, we should note that 
Serco, the company responsible for managing the Mount Eden, Mount Eden Correctional Facility, is also responsible for managing the Wirree Prison as well. And so when we look at these events, of course we need to ask, how on earth is it that the events such as a fight club involving many prisoners at a time can be allowed to continue? It's clearly been organised, space and time has been set aside, and the prisoners have been allowed to freely assault each other in a way that no one would ever expect to allow to happen in any prison, in any civilised country anywhere. And then we have the question of those fights then being recorded on smartphones or cell phones or whatever means are used, which means that contraband is getting through the prison gates and into the hands of prisoners and used to record these events. And then there's the act of uploading the, the uh, footage shot on those cameras or the phones up onto into Facebook or elsewhere on the internet. So how does that happen? in a prison environment in which prisoners are meant to be, uh, if not totally denied access to things like the internet, at least to have them heavily restricted or conducted under supervision. Those are legitimate questions. And why has it happened at the Mount Eden Correctional Facility doesn't appear to have happened anywhere else. And so the Minister now has launched these investigations that will focus on the conduct of the management of Serco, and as Kelvin Davis has rightly speculated, most likely on the conduct of the prisoners themselves. Well, the prisoners are only responding to the environment around them. That's what typically happens in highly controlled environments. It goes back to the responsibility of the management and ultimately it goes back to where the authority, the real authority of Serco lies and that is the contract between the Department of Corrections and Serco itself. But that contract is not the subject of any investigation or any inquiry. The Minister proudly claims we are broadening the inquiry. Well, he's broadening the inquiry into areas where questions don't arise, into the public prison system. Well, no one raised a question about that. There's no evidence of this conduct happening in the public prison system. It's what's happening in that privately managed prison or prison facility, the Mount Eden Corrections Facility. That's the issue. And if the Minister was serious about broadening the inquiry in a way that was helpful to the public of New Zealand, and in a way that is designed to give confidence to the public of New Zealand, then the Minister would broaden the inquiry into that very agreement and into the very policy of contracting out custodial services to private operators who do it for a profit. That's the real question. But it goes against, of course, the DNA of this government to do anything like that, to challenge and question the ability of those motivated by private profit to act in the public interest. To, to, to take on a public service of such importance as depriving liberty of those sentenced by a properly mandated and authorised court uh, in order to serve penal time in the interests of the community. Well, that's what must be investigated. That's what must be examined, Mr Speaker. It's not just what happened on these occasions that have been recorded and uploaded and put on the internet and there for all the world to see and now broadcast on TV. At the heart of this, is this government's policy, this government's arrangements and the agreements it has entered into with the likes of Serco, whether for this facility or any other correctional facility that it's contracted out. The public must have confidence at all times that our corrections facilities, that our prisons are operated to the highest possible standards, that the greatest possible security is, is uh, uh, maintained and the citizens innocent citizens, law-abiding citizens are protected. And of course there will be gradations of security, but for those who are prone to fighting, to committing assaults, to committing offences in the way we've now seen recorded in, would you believe, a prison facility, something has gone seriously wrong. And if the Minister is serious about getting to the bottom of it, he will look at his own department's actions and a truly independent investigation, not just with Ombudsman oversight, but a truly independent investigation involving a QC or a district or a High Court judge looking at their total arrangement, the total policy, nothing less is required. And the failure of this government and this minister to do that means they are not taking this issue seriously. Once again, the citizens of New Zealand are being treated as if they just don't matter.
I call uh, Mahesh Pandra. Mr. Speaker, the images from 